quick reality check. There are more than 212 million diverse Arab women hailing from 22 countries and territories. Some are athletes, doctors, lawyers, scientists, and fashion designers. Most are Muslim, but many aren't. Some wear hijabs, abayas, and burqas, and some don't. Yet in our popular imagination, Arab women all come from nondescript desert landscapes like Jasmine's Agrabah, and they all have pet tigers, and wait, that's not right. They're all horribly repressed and are all longing to escape to, you know. century colonialism to the 21st century war on terror, the veil's westernized symbolism of female oppression has both justified and incentivized warfare, occupation, and bigotry. On television, movies, and even news media, we usually see only two often silenced portrayals of Arab women whose clothing speaks for them instead. This harem girl veiled victim dichotomy first emerged in European art and photography following Napoleon's 1790 invasion of Egypt. Orientalist images of fantasy Arab women took center stage amid scenes of violence. Similar scenes also took place in IRL colonialized life, such as in 1958 during the Algerian War, when French women ceremonially removed Algerian women's veils to symbolize their loyalty to France. Across the Atlantic, this imported stereotype was one of the most popular attractions at the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. A no-holds-barred celebration of American exceptionalism, the Columbia Exposition featured a mock Cairo Street, where more than two million visitors gawked at the women's unsightly disguises, aka Niqabs. But the real scene stealer was sensational Syrian performer Little Egypt, whose belly dancing was the first open display of Arab female sexuality in the United States, though it certainly wouldn't be the last. <laughs> Thomas Edison's 1896 vignette Fatima Dances to today, American films have continually recast two-dimensional Arab women as either exotic eye candy or dehumanized bundles in black. In 2003, media analyst Jack Shaheen analyzed a thousand films throughout Hollywood history and found just 12 positive depictions of Arab characters. Just 12. Was Dizzy's Aladdin a positive portrayal of Arab culture? And yes, gender-based discrimination and violence do exist within certain Arab and Muslim cultures, barring Saudi women from driving, lowering Middle Eastern girls' literacy rates, and subjecting some Sudanese girls to female genital mutilation. But essentializing and erasing the lived experiences of such a diverse group of women whose histories, accomplishments, and faiths we tend to know so little about isn't just ignorant, it's dangerous. An ACLU survey found that 69% of hijabi women in the United States reported discrimination or outright harassment in public. And anecdotally, those incidences have been on the rise in the wake of the Paris and San Bernardino attacks. So it makes you wonder when it comes to what and who all is doing the repressing, whether we're the ones who've been hiding behind the veil.